Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Greg here with Camera Chorus, and this is actually the first video we've put out in over five years. We used to do photography tutorials quite a while ago, but just got really busy and bogged down, but decided to come back and start making them again. And today, we're gonna talk about five reasons why you need a tripod for your photography. So let's get started. So over the years of doing photography, the tripod has been one of the most crucial parts of my kit when photographing, because it allows me to not just hold on to the camera, but focus on the different settings of the camera, focus on the composition and all these different things and really take in the shot that I'm trying to create, not just snap something quickly and then move on. The first reason you need a tripod is for long exposures. Whenever you're shooting photos with a shutter speed lower than 1 60th of a second, you can start to notice some blur from handshake. And if you have a really steady hand or using a wide lens, you may not notice it, but the lower you get, as you get to one second exposures, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, it's almost impossible to handhold and get a worthwhile photo. So what I did is I went down to a pier in San Diego and I decided to take some photos at sunset. The first photo I took I did it just at one third of a second. So it's not a super long exposure, but I set it on the tripod and I had a neutral density filter on and just took one so I could get the water a little bit soft looking, but I also took it with the camera off the tripod. As you can see, there's a lot of camera shake. And so the photo just is pretty much unusable. And that was only one third of a second. When I went on and shot a few more shots, I started shooting at 13 seconds. And when you do 13 seconds, it's pretty much impossible to not use a tripod. So the second reason is long lenses. When you get a longer lens, it's much harder to keep it stable. And when you're shooting below one 200th of a second or even lower, it makes it much harder to get a sharp image. And when I'm shooting landscapes, I really wanna make sure that image is really sharp and crisp. So I went down to the beach again and I shot some down the coastline towards this old power plant in Carlsbad, just because I wanted to see what it would look like with a long lens. I shot this on a 70 to 200 at the 200 millimeter setting. Who knows, you might have the steadiest hands out there, but I know I don't. And I definitely like using a tripod when I'm using long lenses for landscapes. So next, let's talk about our third tip, macro photography. With macro photography, you're getting very close to a subject. And the closer you get to the subject, the th more shallow that depth of field is on the photo. So it really helps to have your camera on a tripod so you can slowly pull in that focus on the correct spot in the image. And this makes for very creative images, but it also allows you to really choose how you want that image framed and how you want it focused. With such a tight depth of field, it's very hard to do so elsewise. Fourth, are self-portraits. And no, I'm not just talking about selfies. What I'm talking about is being able to take a photo of your family without a photographer. This photo is from a couple months back when we did a family photo. And what I did is I put the camera and got everything set on the tripod, how I wanted it focused, framed, and everything. And then I had one of our friends stand behind the camera with a remote trigger and just get the kids to smile. So they didn't have to know photography to be able to allow us to get great photos. And for me, it really turned out great and I gotta save a little bit of money. Our fifth and final reason, and probably our most complex reason for why you need a tripod, is for combining multiple images. First, let's take a look at the sunset. When we shot the sunset, there was one shot where I wanted the water to be super soft from a long exposure but the clouds were really tight and I didn't want them to be soft in the sky. So in this first image, I used a 13 second exposure to expose properly for the building, the rocks, but also to make the water look really soft. But I didn't really like how the sky looked and there were these nice clouds that I didn't want to blur in the sky from a 13 second exposure. So what I did is I took another image at just 0.8 seconds. So that allowed the sky to be more properly exposed, a little more dramatic, but also allow those clouds not to be smeared through the sky. 
but to be a little more sharp. The second way we combine multiple exposures is in macro photography. This photo that we have here of this purple flower had such a shallow depth of field that in this first image you can see pretty much only the center of the flower is in focus. So what I did is I slowly focused six different times across that flower and then brought it into Photoshop and did something that's called photo stacking and brought the whole image together so that you have one really sharp photo throughout the whole flower. Hopefully this video has given you some practical tips on why having a tripod can really benefit your photography. And I didn't want this video to go too extremely long, so I didn't dive into which tripod to buy, but if you wanna learn a little bit more about this trusty Monfrotto tripod that I've had forever, there's a link down in the description. And if you stay tuned next week, we're actually gonna do another video where we talk about how to purchase your first tripod and what to look for. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you watching this video. If you like this video and wanna see more videos like it, make sure you click on that subscribe button. And if you like the video, click that like button. All right, thanks so much for joining and we're excited to show you lots of new videos this year. Stay tuned.